is the third heaven traveler, Andrew Sheets, with you. I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. For those that do not like the word Christmas or believe it's a pagan holiday, well, I pray that your eyes could be opened, that it was the pagans that hijacked these dates and times and places when the wise men came, when Jesus Christ was about two years old, two or three years old. All of the timing, I have it all in blogs if you ever are interested, email me. But no, Christmas is a very joyous time of the year. It's when our blessed Savior came, our kinsman redeemer, <laughs> redeemer came to us. What a joyous time. Praise God. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this Christmas season. Thank you, Lord, as we come into this. And I've just been moved in the Spirit, Lord, to read this blog. The whole blog is about the spiritual life of Jesus Christ in us who believe on him and applying this existence to our physical world. In the gospel, the whole reason why Jesus Christ came is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. We're saved. If we believe that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross for our sins, he was buried and rose again on the third day. Yes, if we believe this, we're saved. That's it. And this is why we get excited for this time. The Messiah, our Lord Jesus Christ, he came to relieve, to free the captives. Praise God, Lord. Thank you. This, this time also for me is a very high watch time for the rapture. And people might thinking, oh, wow, is he going to be giving uh, dates here? Uh, yes, every date I'm a watcher. I'm a date setter. Every date's a date. I'm setting this date. But listen, for waiting for the rapture, I just want to do a quick one here. It reminds me of waiting for dad when I was a kid. Waiting for the rapture. When I was a kid growing up in the foothills of Colorado, in the Rocky Mountain foothills of Colorado, outside of Boulder, Colorado, back in the 1960s, we'd get a call from Dad that he'd be coming home soon. Seriously, that could mean one hour or five, depending on a million different variables. So me and my siblings, we'd go out to the end of our property, we'd watch and wait. We could see miles down that old dusty dirt road. Sometimes my father would have been away for, from home for weeks at a time, so it was a big deal. We knew we'd get a present like a stick of gum or something, but the only thing we really wanted was to see, hear, feel, and smell that giant of a man, to see his huge grin, to hear his laughter to feel his massively huge warm hug and smell the leather and diesel fuel in those unique scents that only belong to dad. I, being the oldest, would climb up on a large fence post, squinting my eyes, trying to pick up signs of the first dust rising and then that beloved 1954 red Chevy pickup truck. My yearning siblings would keep repeating, You see anything yet? No, nothing yet. Be patient. I would tell them, I'm going to tell you if I see anything. Don't worry. He's coming any minute now. And then there it was. The dust cloud plume rising over the horizon. I'd yell, Oh my God, he's coming over the horizon. Okay, yes, there he is. I jumped off and we would ran like maniacs down the hill and would wait for dad to pull up and pick us up and then ride to our farmhouse all overwhelmed with joy. I often remember this when I look back at the many years now that I've been watching and waiting for the rapture. There were moments we'd be weary in our waiting, but the meeting was worth the wait. Be strong, dear saints. Do not grow weary. Encourage each other. Amen. Thank you to all the true watchmen who encourage and equip the saints as we eagerly wait for our blessed hope. God bless you. Can you imagine 
the unspeakable joy we will share when we are at the feet of our kinsman redeemer. Praise God. Hallelujah. Maranatha.